Duncan for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, I request the Minister address the House to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, tomorrow night in my hometown of Knoxville, Tennessee, the 24,000-seat Thompson Bowling Arena will be filled with people to celebrate the life of Coach Pat Head Summit. Coach Summit was buried last week in the little farming community of Henrietta, Tennessee, where she grew up. As most people know, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's at the age of 58 six years ago. She fought this disease with such courage that about five years ago, I had the privilege of sitting with Coach Summit as she received the top award presented by the National Alzheimer's Association. This was the Sergeant and Eunice Shriver Profiles in Dignity Award, and it was presented by their well-known daughter, daughter Maria. No one could have been more deserving of this award than Coach Summit. She made the decision to go pu both go public with this diagnosis and continue coaching her beloved la Lady Vols. Later, she decided to give up her coaching job after 38 years to help lead the fight against Alzheimer's. She and her son, Tyler, have established the Pathead Summit um, Foundation to carry on this battle that is and will be so very, very important to millions of people. Coach Summit became head coach of the UT Lady Vols at the very young age of 22, really because nobody else was interested in the job. At that time, only the players and their parents uh, attended the games. Uh, thanks largely in part to uh, Pat Head Summit, t uh, women's basketball became a major support, drawing crowds of uh, 20,000 and more. She certainly was the most respected woman in, in Tennessee and my most famous uh, constituent and a longtime friend. I was honored on two occasions to be her honorary assistant uh, coach. The first time was on her 25th anniversary as a coach, and the second time was a few uh, it was several years later in a game against Vanderbilt on the last home game of the season. Before that game, we were given a scouting report, and Tennessee had beaten Vanderbilt in Nashville by 30 points, so it is accurate to say that the team was fairly confident about this game. However, at halftime, the game was almost tied, and the Lady Vols came into the locker room with their heads hanging down. That is when I saw Coach Summit go into action. She got into each young woman's face like a baseball manager arguing with an umpire. She started with Lady Vol Teresa Jeter and told her in a drill sergeant's voice that she was going through a pity party out there and Coach Summit was having no part of it and was giving her two minutes to make her presence known on that court or she was going to yank her out of there so fast it would make her head spin. When we went back out for the second half, the first thing that happened was that Teresa Jeter stole the ball. She took it down court for a layup and her first two points of the game. The Lady Vols went, Vols went on a 20 to nothing run and Vanderbilt called a timeout. A spectator in the stands whom I had not seen because there were 20,000 people there sent his card down to me and on the back he had written, Jimmy, great halftime coaching, come again. But it was not me, it was Coach Summit. In fact, when she was staring each one of her players in the face at halftime in an intensely angry, very loud voice, I was just glad I was not one of those players. Coach Summit was the winningest coach in basketball history with 1,098 victories. Her teams won 16 Southeast Conference, Southeastern Conference championships and eight national championships. She coached in 18 Final Fours. She had an 84 percentage winning record as a head coach. But to me, her most impressive statistic was a 100 percent graduation rate by her players and she did not allow her players to take easy courses because she wanted them to be prepared for life after basketball and almost all of her players have been successful after leaving the University of Tennessee. On top of this, she never had a question raised about her re recruiting or any NCAA violation. She showed through the years that you did not have to cheat in sports to win and be very successful. She succeeded at her most important job being a mother and raising her son Tyler. Coach Summit was inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame and was NCAA Coach of the Year and unprecedented seven times. In 2000, she was named Naismith Coach of the Year. Pat Head Summit was a woman of great honor and integrity. She was a great, great success because of her very hard work, dedication, determination, and discipline. Most of her success she credited to her hardworking parents and lessons she learned on her family's Tennessee farm. Mr. Speaker, this nation is a better place today because of Coach Pat Head Summit and her work with young people and the inspiring example that she set for all of us. I yield back.